Some people say there's no such thing as a federal resume. There's only a resume. There's a resume that you apply in the private sector, and there's a resume you apply for government jobs. And that's somewhat true, but there are some major differences between the resume you would apply on Indeed or LinkedIn and the resume you would apply on usajobs.gov. Let's get into it. The first thing is the length. How long should it be? Your standard resume, the one that you would apply on Indeed or you would apply on LinkedIn, that needs to be one or at the most two pages because no one has the time to read through it. So you need to put all the good stuff first page. You need to make sure you have words that are popping out so that you can capture the interest of the human resource specialist so that you can get the interview. Now, with the federal government, it's not the same. So usually you're talking about three to five pages, and it could be more. People have gotten hired on a 15-page federal resume. At the same time, people have also been hired on a two-page resume. Any and everything in between, you will probably see, and you could find success with. So why is it so long? Why does it have to be this long? The main reason is the human resource specialist, they can't assume, they can't make assumptions on your resume. So if in the qualification section or the specialized experience, it says we need someone that knows how to operate a hole puncher or a stapler, you can't just say I'm an office manager. You need to put that word stapler somewhere in your resume. You need to put in there, I'm proficient with a stapler and a hole puncher, because if you don't use that language, if it is not clear without a shadow of a doubt that you have that skill or experience, you could be disqualified. So there is no magic number, but you need to read the job announcement. Some agencies and some offices, they will have a limit. It'll say, we do not read any resume past the fifth page. It'll actually say that in there. Or we don't accept resumes over six pages. So read through the job announcement, make sure there's not a limit or criteria, but generally speaking, I think between five or seven pages, depending on how much experience you have. If you have 10 years of experience, I can see it easily being five, six, or seven pages. Next is accomplishments. In a private sector resume, you don't necessarily need to mention your accomplishments. You can mention your responsibilities and get away with it. You can even mention your hobbies. You can say, hey, I like making muffins and donuts on the weekends. I love going on races. I'm a marathon person. And that gives a different dimension to your personality. In the government, no one really cares too much about your personality at, in the beginning of the hiring stage. I mean, no one's going to be looking at that. Another thing is you can put your accomplishments in your federal resume. You should. And you can do it in order to be qualified. But being qualified is just not enough. You need to be best qualified. And that is how you're writing your resume, to convey the level of experience that you have. So take time with it. Develop those accomplishments, build those success stories so that you can be competitive. Even if you have preference, you're a veteran or you're a Schedule A or you're a Peace Corps, a person off the street can beat you if their resume shows that they're more highly qualified than you. That means they have numbers, they have percentages in their achievements in their resume. Now, if you find yourself struggling writing a resume, I understand that. I actually went through and I wrote a 0343, which is Management and Program Analyst. I wrote a complete resume out. Also for the 0340 series, which is Project Management, I wrote a complete resume out. It shows you, if you look at it, how you should be structuring your accomplishments, how you can structure your success stories that can help you stand out in the hiring process. If you wanna take a look at those two resumes that I wrote up recently, I will leave it in the pinned comment down below. Next, there is additional information that is required in a federal resume. That is just not required when you're applying to the private sector. We're talking about your supervisor's name. Can they contact them? Do, do you want them to contact you first? How many hours did you work? Nobody really puts that in a private sector resume. You don't have to put, I worked 40 hours. But in a federal resume, they want to know how many hours. What was your salary? Now, some of these are not required. Like your salary and your supervisor's name, it's not required information. But what I believe, what I recommend is full transparency. Those boxes for the information, they exist on the resume builder on usajobs.gov. So I go ahead and put the information in. I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable with it but I recommend you still put it in there. It is also helpful on the top page to put the hiring path that you qualify for. So if you're a veteran, 
Put VEOA up there, put VRA up there, put recent graduate eligible up there. Whatever you have up there, go ahead and list it on that first page. All right, next is actually listing what you need in order to get hired. So in the private sector, you go on Indeed, there, there's a laundry list of qualifications. This is assumed by many people to be a wish list. You don't have to meet all those requirements. You can still apply. And in some cases, you can still get the interview. A lot of people do it. But in the government, they have more strict rules. So if it says Microsoft Excel, you need to put down there Microsoft Excel. We talked about this previously, but this is a key distinction between both type of resumes. This is why, one of the reasons why the federal resume is so long. And you don't wanna miss anything when you're submitting your application. So once again, make sure you're reading through that job announcement. Once you've read through, I would say a couple of dozen of them, you'll be very familiar on what section to go to to get what information. There's a required document section. Anytime I'm about to apply to a job, I go right down there. I say, what do, what do these guys need? They need a, an SF-50. What if you're not a government employee? You don't have an SF-50. What are you going to do? A lot of times you can just create a blank document and say, I am not a federal government employee, and you still attach it. So you just have to have a great understanding on what is required when you're looking at that job announcement. The next way is how is it formatted? If you look at private sector resumes, a lot of them are different, but what you will notice at the very top, you will have a summary or you will have a skills or a key competencies. All that stuff needs to go away. Get rid of all of that. That is fluff. You are not getting hired on that. You are not getting hired on your summary. Delete that paragraph, it's taking up a lot of room. We need to get right into the experience. Don't even put your college up first, all right? Because many of us, we're not qualifying solely on education. Put the college towards the end. Experience up first. That is what's going to get you hired. The only two things that will get you hired, experience and education. It should be in that order. Experience first, towards the end, put your education. Also, you can get real creative with the private sector resumes. You might have seen some of the examples. They're on LinkedIn. You got people's face. It looks like a model shoot. <laughs> they have some really good pictures. And then there's this artistic flair with the different colors and the different font. It looks, it looks crazy to me, but you know, I can see why it's eye popping. With the federal resume, you wanna make sure there's no photos. You are not supposed to have a photo in your resume when you're applying for a government job. And to this end, I would also suggest not putting your LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile, your website, your link, your, your, your web address, your LinkedIn profile. I wouldn't put it in there. People have done it and people have been hired. So you, there will always be a segment that says, hey, don't listen to him, it actually works, that's how I got my job, all this other stuff. I'm telling you right now, you're not supposed to have a photo in there. Part of the reason why is for discrimination purposes. So I would highly discourage you from putting in your LinkedIn or any kind of social media website link, I wouldn't do it. I also wouldn't list hobbies. You know, you don't have to put in there, put that you like bowling or you like hiking, you know, that's not necessary. Don't talk about your spouse. Do not talk about your kids. That's also not necessary. You don't need to have it for a federal resume. Now, if your resume is already strong and you've been applying for jobs, you've been getting interviews, but you can't get past that stage. You can't get past the interview stage because you've been rejected. If you want to know why you're being rejected on those interviews, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.